Hello students and welcome to your first lecture in fluoroscopy. We are going to be covering several different areas within this lecture. Uh, we're going to be covering the history. We're going to talk about the different types of equipment and where it's used. You're going to have a second lecture on the eye. We're going to talk about the brightness and that's going to come in handy when we talk about your second week lecture with the image intensifier. So Thomas Edison, as we talked about in your 105 class, he discovered fluoroscopy in 1896, so a year after Rankin discovered x-rays. So what is fluoroscopy? It is the primary function of the fluoros fluoroscope is to provide real-time dynamic viewing of atomic structures. So it's used to show the body in dynamic movement. So we give barium to patients so that we can watch it flow through the digest digestive tract. We'll inject iodine into the vascular system so we can see arteries and veins and any kind of disruption um, to see tumors. General versus fluoroscopic x-ray. So in a general room, it's a single and discrete exposures uh, um, of images. So we take a radiograph and then we need to process the image. If it's digital, it comes up on the um, monitor in basically real time. So it has fixed KVP and MA and we select the time and we want to pick the shortest time as possible. So when we're working with general radiography, we're medium to high KVP, medium to high MA, and we use the shortest exposure times as possible for patient motion. So the patient needs to be still and um, or else we get blurry images. Image receptors are, um, we use film, CR, and DR plates. So in fluoroscopy, it's a continuous x-ray. So we have variable KVP and or MA for the anatomy. So we use low to medium KVP and we use as low of an MA as possible. So very low compared to general diagnostic x-ray. The time is variable, and what that means is that it's dependent on how long we fluoro. So um, if the radiologist has got a lead foot, if the time is going to be high, or if the doctor is really good and really fast, the time is going to be very short. So the idea is to view the anatomy in motion. We can take images or, um, and save them. We can take a series of images, really rapid fire, or we can video it so and make it into a movie through cine or put it on a disc. So um, the uh, receptor that we use is called an image intensifier. Um, you'll hear me refer to it as an II. So the image intensifier or II. So due to the nature of dynamic imaging, it is recommended that it's done by a radiologist. Um, technologists typically do not do fluoroscopy. You can have a PA, an NP, or an RA do fluoroscopy. There are some instances that we will do uh, fluoroscopy, and it's usually for like the terminal ilium. Um, is not to be used to position patients, so that was going on for a while where people would use fluoro to make sure that they're positioned like for a swallow function video. Um, that is actually illegal. You are not allowed to do that. So um, you are there to assist the doctor and help them position the patient, give the barium or the contrast as they request. And um, you're mainly there for the patient and to do um, follow-up images for the radiologist. So here's an example of a terminal ileum spot film that um, a technologist would be asked to do. So um, we're going to go deeper into this in further lectures down the road. I think it's um, three or four, week three or four. So image capture and fluoroscopy, we can use a spot film and that's just a permanent fixed image taken during fluoroscopy. It's just an x-ray. There's um, usually a small lag between going from fluoroscopy to the x-ray tube taking an image. So when the doctor actually is fluoroing and then he hits the trigger to take an image, it takes a couple seconds. So there's a lag there with the spot film. With Cine, um, it records the fluoro images like a movie. It's usually done in the cardiac cath lab while they're injecting the heart. Um, you can, or if we're doing any kind of runoff, they can follow it all the way down and it records. 
There's video imaging, so recording of the digital image, which is digitized video signal and stores in the computer. So um, we really use that a lot in digital fluoro. So next is the digital fluoro. So digital x-ray imaging systems that produce a series of dynamic images with the use of an x-ray beam and an image intensifier. So that's um, digital fluoroscopy, which we'll cover after we cover just the regular um, conventional fluoroscopy. <clears throat> So there's general room fluoroscopic um, tables. And we're going to talk about the different ones here in just a minute. And what we use those for is kind of any kind of barium study. So your upper GIs, your BEs, your swallow function videos. Um, we'll also do iodinated uh, studies such as VCUGs or hysterosalpinograms. Um, we'll do cystograms, different studies. Interventional radiology, so it's a great place for stents and opening up vessels. There's cardiac interventional. Sometimes these two are combined. Um, depends on the size of your facility. Uh, the cardiac interventional radiology is used for the heart, so anything to do with the heart. They'll put stents in, pacemakers, defibrillators, you name it. The operating room um, is great for any kind of C-arm work. Um, sometimes they have fixed units, but typically we're bringing in any kind of unit, um, a C-arm unit. So we use that for, you know, ortho work, um, oncology, etc. So radiographic fluoroscopy, so the slash there, so R and F tables. So that's where you have an x-ray tube and a fluoro. So R and F, um, you'll say, oh, in the R and F room, that's what that means. So R and F units with under the table x-ray. That's what we have. It's the most common. And the tube and the collimator are mounted below the table, which is great because it provides safety. So the table, being metal, um, will absorb the x-rays and help provide a natural shield there for you. Imaging um, intensifier, or the II, is mounted above the table. And it is used. It usually has a drive on it where the uh, doctor can drive the table and see the body. Uh, there's an overhead tube that can be used for general x-ray with a bucky that's within the table. When you're using these tables, it's very important that you move the bucky um, all the way down to the end of the table or else it'll be in your images. So it has a floating tube that's not part of the floral system. So the table um, also tilts, which is great, and it has obviously some kind of recording device. So here's a picture. This is just like our room. So you can see here there's the x-ray that's under the table. This is the II or the image intensifier and there's a free floating tube. So this is the general layout here. You have a generator. You have the x-ray tube, the collimator, and the filtration. You have a usually a carbon fiber table or some kind of radiolucent table. The patient, here's your II, your image intensifier. You have your uh, video camera, so your optical coupling with your video camera or CCD, which we'll talk about later, which goes to the monitor for you and the radiologist to see. So here is an over the table unit. So the x-ray tube is mounted over the table. The II is within the table. Um, very hard to shield with any kind of drape or anything. Um, pretty high exposure on these, so be careful and you can angle the tube on these. So as you can see here, you have the tube up top and the II is here down below. This is fairly common also. Very important that you bring in a portable shield with these. We're gonna learn about why later. So here's the two different systems. There's the over the couch and under the couch. So this is what we have in our lab. So there's a fixed C-arm positioners. Um, they move in all directions. They're floor ceiling mounted. They're floating tabletops for easy movement of the patient. Um, we can also move the C-arm so that it's easier for the doctor um, without moving the patient all the time. So here's a typical unit. This is a uh, ceiling mounted. You can see here, and this is the C-arm here in the table slides and the C-arm slides. So there's a biplane unit, which is great for any kind of neuro um, work. It's, uh, you can see two projections at the same time, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's great for pediatrics and the reduction of contrast. So um, one is floor mounted and one is ceiling mounted. You can use one or the other and you can even use both at the same time. 
to speed up the study. So this is a biplane system. You can see the ceiling mounted part and the floor mounted part. You have to be really good at driving these tables. Um, it gets very confusing and you've got to be pretty good. So if you're working at a center that has a biplane um, and you're able to drive these tables nicely, you're going to have a lot of work. It's good. All right. So tilt C-arm positioner, so it's a modified C-arm. It's equipped to perform both general RF and more complex angio or interventional procedures. And you can see here, um, we had one of these at Mission when I worked there, and we did all of our LPs and uh, arthrograms on this table. It was nice because it angled. Um, instead of having the whole unit angle, the tube will angle, which helped a lot when you're trying to get in on an LP. So this is a fairly common room. So there's mobile C-arms. We all have seen these. So provide imaging for orthopedic and vascular work, um, placement of devices and feeding tubes. Um, they're great for angiographic or interventional. Nice compact design. Uh, you can angle, you can record, and the image intensifier is 10 to 15 cm in diameter, which we'll cover next week. So here you can see a regular C-arm. This is a mini C-arm. You can see how small it is. This is great for any kind of small ortho work, um, feet, ankles, wrists, hands. It's not good for larger body parts. You need to have a full C-arm. Okay, so we're going to talk about luminous flux. Um, we're going to talk about the different types of ways we measure light. So luminous flux, it's the fundamental quality here that we're looking at with light. So the total intensity of light from a source is expressed in lumens. So household lamps are rated by power or watt. So also on the bulb, you'll see that the, each lamp has a luminous flux in um, lumens, so how much light it's actually putting off. So luminance is describes the intensity of light incidence of a surface. It's measured in lumen per square meter, which is one lux. So the range is between 100 and 1,000 lux. So image intensifiers um, perform at similar illumination levels. So it's important to know <clears throat> the background as to why we have what we have and what we're using um, as far as light. So luminance intensity. So the intensity is the luminous flux that is emitted in, in, into the entire viewing area. So it's measured in lumens per, per candela. So we actually call it candela is how we're going to be measuring. So the property um, of the source of light when we're looking at um, a view box or a digital display, we're going to talk about the luminance intensity. And I believe you guys did a lab on that with the view boxes. So luminance is the measure of brightness of a source such as a digital display device expressed as units of candela per square meter or nit. So we say candela per square meter is your luminance. The quality is similar to luminance intensity, so that's how bright the light is also, so it's very similar. Okay, so I'm going to stop here and we'll cover the human eye and the doses in the next video.